Well, greetings, people of the internet. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Hope all of you had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Today, we're getting back to our XCPNG lab. So as you, uh, if you're following along with the series of videos, you know we put XCPN NG on the two Dell R710 servers we have. Uh, we've got that go going. Today what we're going to talk about is um, how to set them up in a uh, high availability or a, or a failover scenario. In other words, um, for example, if you've ever used ESXi, you can use a product called vCenter. And vCenter allows you to put like your servers together in groups and whatnot. So we're going to be doing something similar to that today. We're going to go ahead and we're going to join these uh, two servers into one group. And then we're going to assign some shared resources to it. And then we're going to import some virtual machines under XCPNG today. That's what it's all about. How we get the shared storage and the ISOs configured. Okay, I've been away for a while and I've learned some new things on XCP. So today what we're going to try and cover is uh, a couple of things. One, I don't like the names I gave my XCP servers. So we're going to, we're going to fix that. And then two, we're going to pool. We're going to create a new pool for these XCP servers to go into so that we can share things like storage and we can share things like ISO storage and that kind of thing. It just makes our life easier. It's similar to how we would do VMware uh, and control our VMware servers under vCenter, if that makes sense. So, and then we're going to go out and we're going to rename our NFS share to make more sense for, for Zen Orchestra and for Zen uh, or XCP NG server. So, I'm starting on the XCPNG Center software. I just find it easier to do some things in here than I do in Zen Orchestra, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a moment. So the first thing I want to do is come out here and I want to rename my servers. So I'm just going to right click on the server name, go to properties, and then I'm going to rename this XCP-710-001. And then we'll do this is we'll call this the Dell R710 three and a half inch drive unit. That way I know what it is. I can just at a glance I can see that it's a three and a half inch drive unit. Okay. And then this one we'll do the same thing here. We'll rename it XCP 710002. And this is the Dell R710 two and a half inch drives. Click on OK. Now that should have renamed them. So now let's bring up Zen Orchestra. And look, there's our changes right there. All right, so that was a success. Now you notice something else on the XCPNG Center. I don't have any shared. I set up shared storage when I went to install Zen Orchestra. Uh, and it's a good thing when I installed Zen Orchestra, I installed it to a local drive. So now what I want to do is put the XCP710001 and 002 into a pool so they will pool the resources together. And you would think that is easily done in Zen Orchestra. So let's let's go look at Zen Orchestra and you'll see there's our new names and our descriptions. But there is no way here uh, under pools to add a pool that I can find. I have spent, I even came here to new, you know, snow pool. I have no idea how to add a pool here under Zen Orchestra. So I'm going to show you the way I did it under um, under the Zen uh, XCPNG Center. So I'm going to come here to the root of the center 
and I'm going to create a new pool, okay? And I'm going to give it the name of uh, XCP Lab Pool. I ought to learn how to spell XCP Lab Pool. And we'll just call it Pool of Dell R710 servers. Now, one of your servers has to be, be the master server, so we're going to leave that. It's already selected XCP710 as our master, 001. We're going to add 002 as a new server in that pool. Now, what I'm going to do is click on Create Pool. And this will go out and it will make some magic happen. You will see some errors pop up as, as it rearranges stuff. And then you'll see everything disappear over on the left-hand side. And go under the XCP Lab pool. So if I click the plus sign on it now, you'll see that we'll soon have two servers in here. Let's go to properties. I could have sworn I, I renamed that. So we'll do Dell R. 710 2.5 inch drives. I could have sworn I did that earlier, but it may have lost that when it migrated everything over. So we should see. There we go. So now let's come over to Zen Orchestra. And you'll now see that I don't have those individual hosts listed as my pool anymore. If I click on this, you'll see that I have one, two servers in this pool. Come here to stats. Come here to network, patches, advanced. There's two servers in here. It's set up as the high ability, ability is disabled. I'm not worried about that right now. And then if I come here to hosts, I still have my individual hosts. And I can go out and get my statistics on them. Same way with number two. And you'll see they still, you know, have their descriptors in them like I put in there. So that is how we add and create a pool and add the servers to the pool. Now, one of these days, I'll figure out how to do that under Zen Orchestra. You know, Zen Orchestra is, in essence, VMware vCenter. For the, for the, it's the poor man's VMware vCenter, and I'm a poor man. So, so there we go. We have our servers set up. We have, our, we have them in a pool together. Now let's go out and add some shared storage. So I'm on the storage page of Zen Orchestra, and you can see I do have some storage set up out there. The first one I have set up is uh, the LVM local storage for both XCP 71001 and 002. And then under there, both of those have DVD drives. Uh, they have some removable storage and the XCPNG tools, which is a shared uh, ISO created when you install it. But what we need to get access to is the shared ISO storage so that we can start installing and configuring virtual machines. So, all right, let's try this again. SMB Okay. Alrighty. Well, it worked that time. <laughs> Third time's the charm, I guess. Uh, so let's go under stats and let's go under disks. And then we now see our ISO, ISO files under here. Now this shared ISO, the reason we pooled, the whole reason we did was so we could share resources like this. And it's going to make our lives a whole lot easier when we go to... Uh, 
migrate machines, do live migrations, and that kind of thing. So let's come back to home or go to the dashboard. So now we see one pool, two hosts, one VM, uh, and we, uh, I don't, it doesn't, so, oh, there's the storage that we have available. So we're on our Synology NAS right now, and I want to go into, uh, I want to go into control panel, and I want to go to shared folder. Now, under shared folder, I, had a, I have a shared folder called NFS Lab ESXi. We're not using ESXi. I want to rename this share. Um, so the first thing let's do is let's go in, and you can see we've got a bunch of stuff in here. Um, so I'm probably just going to delete this share, and we're going to start from scratch because there's nothing in there I really need. So we'll just go ahead and delete it. And Synology is going to give us some warning, and it wants us to verify by giving our super secret password away. So we're going to do that. Okay, and so now that shared volume is gone. So what I'm going to do is create a new shared folder. And we'll call this NFS. Let's see, what do we want to call this? Uh, NFS-001. Oh, sure. And then we'll call it NFS share for XCP. Yeah, why don't we do that? I'm going to go ahead and enable the uh, recycle bin. Uh, it's going to be in volume one, ButterFS. Next, we're not going to encrypt it. Uh, we'll enable the data checksum just to be, just to be safe. And we'll do next. And we'll accept those defaults. Now what I'm going to do is come out under edit and I'm going to go to NFS permissions and I'm going to create an NFS uh, permission. So I'm going to give 5.7 access to this because it's the master server. So we'll enter our IP of 5.7 here. We'll do read, write, um, no mapping, regular security. We'll click on save. So now our share name is volume one forward slash NFS dash zero zero one. So let's come out under here and see if we can't add new storage. So we're going to put this on the primary host. And we're going to go uh, FS1018. Let's see. We'll just call it NFS. What do we call it? 001? Yeah, let's be consistent. NFS share on FS1018. And we're going to click here. And then this is going to be an NSF under VDISR. Do NFS. Now... What you need to do is type in the IP address of your Synology NAS here and click on the little thingy here. Um, and then what we're going to do is just leave it at default NFS. We could do up to NFS 4.1. For the path, we're going to click on the little down arrow. And there's our volume 1 NFS-001. And then just simply click on create. And there you go. Stats, disk. So we'll, we'll be able to see our IOPS and see any hosts that are on there, hosts that are attached to it. Uh, for some reason, the Dell R710 is disconnected. We want to connect it to that share, but it's going to give us an error. And why is it giving us an error? Because we did not put the IP address in here of this server under Synology's permissions. So if we come back here, we need to go ahead and create one. For 5.9. And then when we come back here, we should be able to connect to it. Good deal. 
same same way with our uh, NF or uh, ISO share. If we click on that, we should see that it's connected to both hosts. So now we have both hosts set up with shared storage. And if we come back to our XCPNG center, we should also see that we have shared ISO and uh, NFS share available to both of those servers under that pool. So you can see what a boon uh, pooling on those servers is going to do for us. Very, very similar to, to vCenter without all the cost. All right, so the next thing I'd like to cover is importing a virtual machine. Now, you're probably wondering to yourself, but Joe, you haven't told us how to export a machine yet. So that is true. But there is a machine I need to get up and running in order to move forward with these videos, and that is my archival server, my Windows 2019 archival server, because on the machine I'm going to be restoring this to, which if we come here and go to hosts, I'm going to be restoring the virtual machine to this server. Now, this server is the Dell uh, uh, R710 with three and a half inch drives. And the drives on this server are set aside for backups of my uh, Synology NAS. And I need to do a backup. I need to uh, archive all my stuff, uh, update the, the backups to make sure I have uh, my data protected. So... I'm going to import this virtual machine again into XCP. I'm going to try it using Zen Orchestra. If that doesn't work, then we'll try it with uh, uh, we'll try it with uh, uh, XCPNG Center. And I, when I say it doesn't work, it's because this is one of the first or second times I'm going to be doing it. Now, this particular virtual machine and this particular server, I have already set aside. I have isolated the HBA in this unit and set it aside so that uh, XCP can't use it. What can use it is the virtual machine. Uh, so I do a pass-through controller. That way it has direct access to the controller. I'm also not going to show you how to do that entry. That will be an advanced topic we'll do later, but I could ran on all day. So and ideally, all you have to do is come over here to import and we're going to import a VM, and we're going to import it into the lab, and I'm going to store this virtual machine uh, storage or uh, hard drive onto NFS one that we created earlier. Now, it says drop OVA or XVA files here to import virtual machines. So what I've done is I've created a folder here on my applications drive out of my Synology and as called XCP exports. And in there, I have a Windows uh, Server 2019 archive server. And you can see that's in the XVA format. And it's a pretty sizable file. It's 23 gig in size. So it says right here, drop OVA. Well, this is not an OVA file, but it is an XVA file here to import a virtual machine. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drag this archive server right there and I'm going to do um, I'm going to select NFS1 again I don't know why it, it brought that up uh, and let's click on import see what happens so it does say the import is starting uh, okay now it just disappeared Oh, okay. It does. It is updating here. As you can see, it says import. So uh, let's go over to XCPNG Center real quick. And there you go. It does show it's importing. You see what I'm saying about the uh, Zen Orchestra interface versus the XCPNG Center? This is why I recommend you have both of them and flow back and forth between them because I just find it more I can get better answers in some in one interface than I do in the other. All right, so that took roughly about nine minutes to do that import. So let's go back to home and go to VMs and change the filter to none. And then you'll see my archive server. So let's click on that and take a look around. So I've got four CPUs are assigned to it, four gig of RAM, one network card, and a partridge. No, I'm not going to go there. Uh, it's got a 32 gig hard drive 
And uh, yeah, so that's good. Stats, there are no stats. There's no console, it's not running. So here's my virtual network adapter and the IP address it's assigned. Let's see, my disk is, uh, yeah, it's on, uh, it's on the XCP uh, lab pool. Good, it's a thin provision disk. I don't think I have any snapshots. No, nope. let's go to advanced. <clears throat> So you'll see the boot order here, and then you'll see the virtualization mode, CPU mass, CPU weight. I didn't change any of that. I don't have it auto-powering on or anything like that. Uh, it's not in high availability mode or anything like that. Um, so it's made to default uh, boot to the default BIOS. And um, yeah. Now one thing you don't see on here is the HBA. And that's one thing I must point out uh, that VMware does a little bit better um, in its little graphical user interface, web interface. It does show you that uh, that you have a, uh, a pass-through PCI Express pass-through device. I don't see anywhere on here where it tells you that. Now let's go switch over to XCPNG Center and we'll take a look on here because I don't think it has it on here either. So uh, let's go to properties. Let's see. Advanced. Yeah, I don't see anything there. Let's see. Memory. I don't see anything there. Storage. Networking. Console. Performance. Yeah. So that's one of the things you're not going to see on here is it uh, that there is a pass-through device on here. And that leaves me a little confused. I don't know why they don't show that. Maybe that's a feature they'll be doing in the future. But you just need to be aware of it. So I guess what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and fire the virtual machine up. Let me just make sure I'm correct before I start shooting shoot my mouth off anymore. We'll go ahead and start the virtual machine up. Let's go over to XCPNG Center, and yeah, we see it starting up over here as well. That's good. All is well. Hopefully. All right, so there it is. So let's uh, let's go ahead and press uh, Control-Alt-Delete. See if we can log into this bad boy. Now, I haven't set it up on my domain yet. I just uh, got it up and running when I created the VM, and so I could see if the pass-through was working. And you'll see drive vendor is loaded on there. So, um, yeah, we'll do updates later. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and... Um, actually, I'm going to do it through here. I'm going to go to Device Manager and see if it sees our HBA. And there it is. It sees the Dell 6 gig uh, SAS HBA. And like I said, I'll show you later how I pass that controller through. But what I what I was concerned about was showing you that there is no indication that there is a pass-through controller on there. Uh, and so if somebody knows how to find that information out, I know I can go out to a command line and I can see what's being passed through to a virtual machine. But like I said, I want to uh, I just want you to see that there is actually no way to see that through either Zen Orchestra or the XCPNG Center. However, I should see my uh, archive drive there, yes. So I only have 791 gig free of, of 11 terabyte drive. But there is all my backups. There's Unky Joe's Playhouse, all my uh, video files, and here's all my applications, etc., etc. Uh, drive Bender is working. Now, this machine's only been up a few minutes, so it may not be passing through smart information we'll see yeah see smart reporting is not available and i guess what i'm gonna go ahead and do is do the updates on this virtual machine so just come here to uh windows update like we normally would and uh let it do its thing install now all right so i want to do the same thing but this time i want to do it with I want to do it with the XCPNG Center. 
and I'm not going to, uh, I'm, I want to import a machine to my secondary Dell server. Um, see, how much RAM do we have on there? Good. Yeah, we have 32 gig of RAM and about 28 gig is free. I created a server called, um, well, what did I call it? Let's do this. Let's right click and let's go to import. And let's browse to my applications folder. And I called it um, folding at home. And it's about 11 gig in size. So I could select this one. Do an open. Click on next. I want it on this server here. This H7102. Uh, I want it to install on NFS storage for the VM. And I want to import it. And it's asking me what networking uh, interface I want to use. I'm going to use interface zero, which is the gigabit 1-1. Click on next. And I do not want to start the new VM automatically. So we'll go ahead and click on finish. Now this one's about half the size of the previous machine I imported. So hopefully it won't take much more than, a, than about five minutes to import it. But we'll let it run and I'll come back when it's done. All right, so here we are. It took about, uh, oh, I don't know, five minutes to import this machine. So let's go take a look at it through XCPNG Center. So if you'll notice on here, if you look down here, I have eight virtual CPUs. And I've given it two sockets with four cores per socket. I figured that would be enough. And let's go ahead and uh, see if we can start it. Do, 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 do. So again, you have a, uh, you have basically a console connection in the XCPNG center, as well as the, uh, Zen orchestra interface, uh, to control it. So it gives you some flexibility. Now there is question as to whether the people that are making the XCPNG center are going to keep supporting it moving forward. I hope so. I certainly do because again, I personally think you need both of these to have an effective system, uh, you know, one you can control. Um, and again, not a big fan of the command line. Uh, some of the stuff, as you'll see later, as we get into more advanced topics with XCP, they do require a uh, they do require some uh, command line stuff. So there you go. We were able to get them into uh, it's a cluster like you know environment you know, where they're joined together, mutual servers. And that way it allows us to share resources among those servers, like, you know, the ISO share and the, uh, the location for the, uh, uh, for the uh, virtual hard drives and whatnot. Um, and I'm a firm believer in shared storage when it comes to virtualization. I think it's just a, it's just a really good idea. And yet I've got the backbone to do it. I've got a 10 gig backbone uh, using our Unify gear, uh, those servers both have Mellanox 10 gig cards in them. So, uh, and then the NAS are connecting to the FS 1018. Thank you, Sasha, very much. Uh, it's got fast SSD drives in there. So it's a winner winner situation. It makes for speedy virtual machines. I've used this now under Hyper-V, under ESXi, and now I'm doing it under XCP. I just wanted to show you basically how easy it was to get that set up. Now, I'm still having to use two different programs to get things done. I've got the Zen Orchestra web interface, which is fine. Um, and either it's a matter of me just not knowing how to do it in Zen Orchestra, not having enough experience with it, or just being, you know, or just not being there. The function that I want to uh, want to do is just simply not built into it. So I find myself going back and forth between Zen Orchestra and XCPNG Center. And you, I think you're going to find that that is the case with you too. And that's not a problem. I don't, I don't really care about having two interfaces. I actually prefer XCPNG Center to the Zen Orchestra, but to each their own. They have their own features and foibles. So you, you'll, have to, you'll have to base how you feel on your personal experience. I want to make sure I give a special shout out on this video to Captain Radar Tom, as we otherwise know him. You've seen him in our uh, pot, uh, Pixel 8 podcast, and you'll see him and Jamie in our Pixel 8 podcast moving forward. We're going to try and make that a regular thing. But anyway, I digress. So I put the B in the bonnet of, 
of Tom, Captain Radar, and he uh, he decided he wanted to play with XCP and, and G. And before I knew it, one one afternoon he hated it. The next morning he was like uh, like a fourteen year old boy after his first kiss. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. The change was overwhelming and per perplexing a little bit at the same time. But he is a big fan of XCP and G, and he's he's been building a, his own lab right along with me um, at, and, and learning things as he goes. So uh, I think you'll find that once you get your hands on XCP and you see what it can do, you'll be, uh, it'll, it'll win you over as well. And we'll, we're going to be doing more videos. In fact, the next video will be about how to create virtual machines from scratch, Windows, Linux machines, how to do some customization uh, of the interface, that kind of thing. And some more, some of the more advanced uh, options like PCI pass through. We may even talk about video pass through in the next episode, but don't quote me on that. Uh, but anyway, we've got lots of fun, lots of things to explore with XCP still to come. So there we go, folks. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always. Please give us a thumbs up down below if you liked it. Uh, let's see. Leave your comments down in the comments section. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos when they come out. Donate if you're so inclined. We accept PayPal, Patreon, and the YouTube join function. Uh, we can always use your, your contributions, uh, put them back to work, and get some new items to review on the channel. So thanks for coming to see us. Please come back and see us again. And don't forget, we'll see all of you on the other side.